and overtake me, and I would lay on the ground, unable to move, unable to get up. Some people have said, well, why didn't you just run away? I couldn't. I could not move. I laid there for probably more than an hour trying to move in a 10-foot circle where I had no ability to stand. I would stand and I would fall down. At one point I stood and I fell and I tore my shirt against a tree. And then I began to hear a sound, a sound that was like a harmonic coming from somewhere out there. At first I thought, oh, it's a hiker, it's another hiker, it's a camper. They can help me. And I needed help. And I listened and I stood up and I tried to find where that sound was coming from. And it was an irritating sound, almost a low ebb harmonic sound. And I would walk and I would listen and then I couldn't hear it any longer, and I'd get frustrated, and I'd get sick, and I'd get angry. I had to keep in the moment. I had to think of things like, can I take the next step without falling down? Can I survive the next five minutes? At one point, I didn't know if this was reality or not. And I would stand up and count my fingers to keep telling myself that, yes, this wasn't a dream and I was still functioning somewhat. After a few moments, I heard the sound again. And again, I crawled toward what I th heard and what I thought was hopefully some help. And through the trees, I saw what looked like a mirage. I saw the trees and the light bend just slightly. But this was unusual because it was an overcast day. But that's where the sound was coming from. And so I went through the brush waiting, hoping somebody would be there. And I went down the hill and over the rise, and I saw this black thing. And it wasn't help. And I looked at it, and I fell against it. And the cold from the surface burned my hand as if it was dry ice. And it was hard, and it was cold, but I felt like there was some other presence there, like it wasn't just a cold piece of stone, like there was some kind of consciousness that I can't explain. I looked around and I noticed this thing was not touching the ground. And I got sick and I couldn't move. And I was angry because this didn't fit into my world. And I questioned my sanity as I do now and have ever since. But I know I wasn't insane. And I'm not now. And I know what I saw. And it was there. Sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. And I think everybody here should be pretty comfortable with that. <laughs> <laughs> to sum up what happened, what I call the event, I then tried to regain strength as much as I could because I knew I had to get out of this area because it was going to get dark. When this happened, it was 2.55 in the afternoon on an October day. It gets fairly dark fast. 
in Seattle. I didn't know if I could move a hundred feet yet an hour back to my car. And I walked back to my pack and I drank some water and I sat there trying to calm down, trying to keep from getting sick moment by moment. Every step of the way, I kept saying, one small step, I can do this, one small step. And then I remembered I had my camera. And what you saw is what I took. And I didn't know if any of it would come out. But it did, and I'm glad it did. And if I was insane about what I was seeing, then now so are all of you. <laughs> and I took the pictures, and I calmed down, and then I thought about what do I do with this thing that I killed, that I didn't know what it was. And I thought about hiding it from the world because I felt that I had done a terrible thing on one hand because I'm not a violent person. But then I thought about preserving it, maybe bringing somebody back to help me. I thought about dragging it over and burying it so that animals wouldn't get it. Well, I didn't have a shovel. I had a knife. And the terrain in this area was extremely rocky and hard. I thought maybe I could take the thermal blanket that I had in my pack and cover it up and cover it with stones or branches to at least keep it away from some of the animals in the area. So I got the thermal blanket out and I laid it on the ground and I pushed this thing into the blanket. And then I wrapped it up and I started to drag it with the straps from my pack over to the hillside. And when I did that, I realized it was very, very light. So light I could hardly believe it. And I thought, there's no place to put it here. I'll find a place, and I'll start dragging it back down the hill. And I started to walk, dragging this thing with me. And I never found a place to put it until I got back to where my Jeep was. And I walked over to my Jeep, and I threw it back in the back end of my Jeep, and I closed the door. And I got in my Jeep, and I sat in the driver's seat. I looked over where my dog sat. And thought, this can't be happening. This is not part of my, my life my world. It had to be something else. This never happened. This was an illusion. Then I looked in the rearview mirror and I could see what was wrapped up in the thermal blanket. And I knew then that I had witnessed something a little strange. And I drove home. And I stopped at a ranger station to get help. There was no one there. I don't know if it was late in the season or if he was out to McDonald's, but he wasn't there. At that point, I got home.